Over the past 10 years, every chassis that we've designed here at PRC has incorporated some type of an adjustable front end. And beginning with the Nemesis, on through into the Phenom and then the Icon, each of them used what we call a caster block design, where we use a caster block to, that uh, holds a spindle, and then we also have a frame plate that's welded to the frame. When you put these two together, it allows you to adjust caster and camber. And for the next few minutes, we're going to show you how to properly adjust the caster portion of this. And later on in another video, we'll get into the camber portion. Okay, here you can see we have a cart, just as it comes from the factory, completely installed. And you can see the caster block design. You can see that the caster block actually holds the spindle. Now, every cart that comes from the factory comes with a preset caster setting. To find out what that is, you can refer to your owner's manual, or you can also look at the front of the caster block. Each caster block dictates what the caster setting is, like this is a right side 12 degree block. So in other words, whenever you install this block on your cart with two pins installed, it will give you a 12 degree caster setting. From there, if you want to adjust your caster, what you have to do is remove the top pin, not the bottom, the top. So it's like this. You remove the top pin and leave the bottom installed. You never want to run any caster block with both pins out. The center pin is used to locate the tracking of the cart and also the wheelbase of the cart, and that's how uh, that the caster block operates. It pivots around the center pin. So after the block is installed with, without the, uh, the top pin, it goes on the cart, and then it allows the caster block to rotate to adjust to any caster setting that you would like to change to. By now you've probably noticed that your right front plate has two sets of holes in it where the left front only has one set of holes. And the reason we have two sets of holes is because each of these chassis has adjustable right front lead. We have a long setting and a short setting. Now the thing I want to point out to you right here is, is there's also two sets of lines on the top of the right front plate. These are witness lines. The reason there is two is because you have one line that is used whenever you're using the long setting, which would be the forward. So if you use the forward hole, you want to use the forward line. If you use the rear hole or the shorter lead, you want to use the rear line. That's important because we've had a couple customers call in, and we've really had more than a couple, we've had a lot, to call in and they get confused. They'll be using one set of holes and another set of lines. And, then, and, and you can imagine, that really gets your caster settings all off. So remember, the forward set of holes uses the forward set of lines, and the rear uses the rear. Never use them interchangeably. All right, so let's walk you through how to change a caster. Now, we've already taken the pin out of this caster block, like we showed you before. So let's, um, so, all right, so let's say you're at the track and you want to make a quick change, uh, change a couple degrees of caster to try to get the cart to do something differently. Okay, whenever you want to change caster on your cart, actually, I do mine with the cart sitting on the stand. Trying to change a caster with the cart on the, uh, uh, on the scales with the driver in it becomes very uh, becomes very heavy. Okay, before we go any further, let me show you this. You got two nuts on each side of your caster plate and block here that allows you to adjust your camber. Now, if we're only wanting to adjust caster, we want to make sure that we do not turn this nut because this nut right here will change the camber setting. So if you're only going to change caster, leave that nut alone while you change this one. So once you have it on the scales, just simply take out these pins, the safety pins, and as you notice, you have two bolts that hold your caster block to your frame. And we have to loosen these two, of course, which you have a 5 16th bolt in the bottom in your heim joint that holds the whole assembly together. So what we want to do is loosen both of these just enough that we can rotate the caster block. So you loosen them a couple turns, which allows you to, to move the caster block. Now we've already taken the pin out of this cart, so all we need to do is rotate this block around to whatever setting we want on the top. Each block is indicated by lines and also with witness marks to indicate what the caster setting is. Simply rotate the entire block assembly to change the caster to whatever you want by reading the lines that are on the top of the block. If you want to change it uh, a full two degrees, you move it a full set of lines. Each line that is on the top are precision laser marked, and all you have to do is turn it and use the appropriate line. Like this one you can see has the long wheel base, so we're going to use the front line. We're going to move it two degrees. After we've adjusted it to what we want, we just retighten these back up. Install these pins back in and you're ready to go. So there it is, simple and easy. 
Caster is easy to change on any of our chassis. But one thing you need to remember before you go back on the track is go over your work, make sure everything's tight, make sure all your pins are in place because you want to keep your driver safe. Now, if you're interested in learning more about changing your caster, about what caster settings does to the performance of your chassis, we have a full video that is dedicated to caster and camera settings in our Top Secret video series. And you can find that located here on this website.